Bethesda has revealed some huge news in the past few days, not just about 76, but also about Fallout 5 and even the Fallout TV series. It's news time! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this one I will cover a mix of news, all related to Fallout of course, but not exclusively to 76. And that's because Bethesda went really wild this week with revelations about upcoming new titles, their plans for the future, and lots of confirmations on matters we have all been waiting for. Anyway, in this news I will also cover the ongoing Fallout First trial and some issues regarding the membership perks. Moreover, it seems like players finally cracked the mystery behind the vendor's rare bug. That one is a tricky one. As per usual, I will also include a few new bugs and the community events for this weekend. Well then, let's make haste and dive into the details. There's a lot to cover today. Okay everyone, I'm sure you heard about it by now. Fallout 5 is a reality, it has been confirmed, and here's the story behind it. On November 9, Bethesda celebrated 10 years of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Besides a fan contest, events, and even a livestream concert, but as the director Todd Howard also spoke to EGN in a very exclusive interview under their unfiltered series, where he disclosed a lot of juicy details on upcoming titles. As obvious, I'm not going to go in depth here about it, it is a long one with two parts, so I'm leaving the link below the video though in case you want to check it out. But I can give you the major points, the highlights. First of all, we now know that Starfield is in a fully playable state and it was an ambitious case of now or never in the sense that this was the right time to dive deep into something brand new, now or never. Todd went further to confess that The Elder Scrolls 6 is on the development queue behind Starfield and that complications and delays with Starfield ultimately means that the next Elder Scrolls has to wait a little bit longer. But the focus here is definitely the confirmation of Fallout 5. Until this point, it was just a rumor, it was pure optimistic speculation, but these days are now over. Todd confirmed that Bethesda already has a one-pager document on Fallout 5, which means they have an idea of what they want to do next. Note that a one-pager normally outlines key features, such such as the potential story, location, timeline, and even major features. Furthermore, Todd also stated that Fallout is part of Bethesda's DNA, which somewhat dismisses the idea that Fallout 5 might get externally developed, but he left it open with the statement, I can say what's going to happen. Another important revelation is about how Fallout 5 is at the back of the development queue behind the Elder Scrolls 6, which means the next Fallout won't come anytime soon, sadly. It should take some years until development is steady. Plus, the next Elder Scrolls will be the main focus once Starfield is released. So definitely there's two major titles at the top of the priority list, leaving Fallout 5 in the limbo for the time being. Lastly, Bethesda confirmed its focus on single-player games, Todd even said it's part of who we are, it's what we love about games, which suggests that the upcoming titles will be single player only or with minor multiplayer or co-op features. Well, these are the interview highlights, a lot of information to digest, I know, but let's proceed to the next news. Now, something a lot of you guys often ask me, and with good reason, is about any developments on the Fallout Amazon series announced back in July 2020. Over a year later, the news have been scarce, it's as if this series is being developed in the secret of the gods, or something alike. In fact, if you search for it in Google, you will notice that the news section is basically empty or filled with unrelated topics. But in this past November 10, Bethesda director Todd Howard did an Ask Me Anything event over Reddit, and he gave us a small update on the Fallout series. That's right, he confirmed the series are moving ahead, so things seem to be in motion, but possibly in a very early stage, judging by the lack of information on, well, 
basically everything related to it. Anyway, I just want to point out that it has been over a year since Bethesda delivered lore information and guidelines to the series writers, but as it is well known, the creative process can take a very long time and TV adaptations do come with its share of challenges. Anyway, the Fallout franchise is a very iconic and popular one all over the world with a rich and compelling story, so expect some long production times as well. I'm sure Amazon wants to get things right, just like they have been doing for the Witcher series. Great things take time, as they say. Lastly, I'm sure we will learn more about the Fallout series in 2022. Mod support has always been a concept for Fallout 76. Even before the game launched, Bethesda confirmed their intentions to develop mod support for 76. We just didn't know how back then, and we still don't know how right now. Over these past three years, it has been a vicious cycle of more of the same type of statement, where Bethesda keeps telling us that mod support is indeed coming, but it never does. Now, you may ask me, so what's the news here? Well, Todd Howard recently talked about Fallout World's DLC for 76, released this past September, and justified the recent prioritized shifting to custom worlds because quote, we are pretty passionate to give our players tools to mod the games. More to come. In other words, players should expect more features in the future for custom worlds regarding mod support. But it all goes back to the beginning. We just don't know how exactly will they do that, if ever. Well, one can hope. The best thing we can do is to remain optimistic, right? Time goes by. Maybe one day we will see it. Who knows? Now let's talk about numbers. Ever since 76 released, it is difficult to know how many players the game has, especially over time. I mean, we had a rocky start, but over time things improved, the game grew and more players decided to give it a try. Still, Bethesda has never really came forward with player numbers regarding 76, at least not very precise, until a few days ago. Bethesda's director Todd Howard stated that currently Fallout 76 is one of Bethesda's most played games with 11 million players. Yes, you heard me right, 11 million. Now, that's a huge number, but please note that game companies normally attach their player base number to the amount of game purchases or registered accounts for that same game. So it doesn't necessarily mean active players, so don't confuse it. Obviously 76 doesn't have 11 million active players. This is not CSGO or League of Legends or something alike. As much as I would like it to be similar here, it is not. However, if you look at Steam's activity chart, for example, you can have an idea about active players. The player peak from the past two months or so is a solid 17k, and the all-time peak has been 32k players. As for Xbox, if you check the most played games right now, Fallout 76 is part of the top 15 list, currently on position 37, so it's not looking too bad. As for PlayStation, it doesn't seem to be as popular there, it's not part of the top 50 played games. Alright, let's keep moving. But as I started the new Fallout First trial on November 9, last Tuesday, and it should last one week. Now, the strange part here is that Bethesda said the trial will end on September 15, basically everywhere, on their website, on their in-game news, in their ITV article, and even the banner. However, the Atomic Shop entry says something different. It claims the trial ends on November 16. So, which day is it ending? 15? 16? Good question. Only time will tell, I suppose. I cannot tell you for sure. I don't work for Bethesda. But I believe it will be on the 16 because it's a full week, so 16 makes more sense. But who knows? Maybe it's really the 15. Someone clearly did an oopsie here. Anyway, for this trial, any player can try it out for some of the first membership features, including the survival tent and the scrap box, which can also be built at player camps to store all sorts of junk and scrap. Keep in mind that once the trial is over, you get to keep the scrap box and everything stored there. But you can 
cannot add any new items. You can just loot or withdraw junk you previously added there. Now, if you were a Fallout First member already, but for whatever reason you missed the mechanics floor and wallpaper rewards, then this is a great chance to get it for free. It's part of the trial perks, so get it while you still can. Lastly, I know I said you could get the Ranger's outfit and emotes in my last news, but I was mistaken. I got deceived or I deceived myself by watching their new Fallout First trailer. I thought it was a trial trailer, but instead it's a complete membership trail, so yeah, that's what happened and that's why I said what I did before. But no, sadly the Ranger outfit and the emotes do not come with this trial. So I hope that clears any confusion. Well, enjoy your first benefits, until next week! Talking about Fallout First, I have seen a lot of player reports lately about how the first perks are not being activated or working at all. I even had a few friends who had service disruptions lately, which clearly indicates something is not working very steadily with the membership. Most reports from this week are about new memberships, which are not being activated after purchases, but there are also a few regarding the trial. Now, I know this is strange and I have no answer for you if you are wondering why is it happening, however, I did find something interesting which might be related possibly is. Apparently, the Atomic Shop and the Fallout First perks were down for everyone recently, but as they even made an official post about it, first one knowledge the issue and later on, after a few hours, they informed players the problem had been resolved. So maybe all the first issues reported after that could be related to some internal error that began earlier this week with this disruption of the Atomic Shop and the membership as well. That would be my best guess, but who knows what's going on internally, right? Anyway, if your first perks stop working while your membership or trial are active, make sure to submit a support ticket because that's not right, it's not fair, something is wrong and it can only be resolved through their support system, so don't forget to do that. The player vendor bug is something I often report on my news and the reason behind it is not exactly personal, it's not like I enjoy to talk about this. Despite being a rare bug, this issue is very old and it can be impairing when it strikes as it can randomly fetch stashed items for sale at random prices and when it hits really good items, players notice and sometimes they even report it if they have evidence, of course. But recently a player might have cracked the trigger or one of the triggers for this bug. According to this extensive report, the vendor bug is related to the max 120 vendor slots for the simple fact that the slots can bug out when you reach the limit of items for sale. In other words, you might have more or less assigned items than what the slot information says. Once that happens, strange things might or can start happening on a more steady manner as reported by the player. Now, I tried to replicate the instructions in the report. First of all, I filled up my vendors with everything and anything I could. It's not so easy to add 120 items for sale, believe it or not. Then my friend Maddox right here bought a few items from me. Every time he bought something, we kept track of the price and I also restocked to make sure the 120 slots was always active. However, the bug never triggered for me. The trades went fine and nothing out of the unusual happened. In fact, my 120 slots did not even get stuck. Now, whenever I sold something, added or removed items for sale, the slots would automatically update. But then later that day, while cleaning up the mess, I removed some 60 items at once and then noticed my slot number still said 120. I was not even recording, then I started, as you can see in the footage, and as soon as we accessed the vendor, the slots updated to 58, which was the actual number. So at least I can confirm the max slots bug is real. It happens and I have proof it does. Now, what I cannot confirm is the other part, the vendor bug, but it would make sense to be related. I mean, if the assigned slots are not working properly on its own, then strange things are bound to happen with the vendor itself. Also, a few other players confirmed the theory in this report, so I do believe it's true. Lastly, if I worked for Bethesda and was assigned to fix this bug, I would certainly and exhaustively look into this. Just saying. 
Next, I have a fresh bundle of bugs to report. It's about the Sadder Edges, released this past Tuesday, November 9. They might look interesting, but their usability is lacking big time. Yeah, this group of items is not exactly working as it should. I tested them for a long while and here's what I discovered so far. First of all, the bugs are mostly related to the small or half edges. If you want to build at ease, then please stick to the long ones. I found no issues with those. But the smaller edges, boy, oh boy, they are a nightmare to work with right now. First of all, they do not attach to foundations lined up with toggle active. Just look at that. The system always attaches them right into the middle of the foundation and never to the edges. How am I supposed to build a straight line across the foundation this way? Yeah, manual it is. It's the only way to do it. The second problem I found was also about the smaller gate and edges. They don't always attach to each other. It can take many attempts. Also, there is a weird gap between them. As you can see, if you place them together, a small gate with a hedge or two small hedges. Moreover, if you try to build them over terrain, the problems are similar. The smaller ones don't always attach to one another with toggle on, so you're forced to use manual mode once again and try to make a straight fence. Good luck with that, it's really not easy. So in the end, this group of items comes with a tier of problems. It's really bothersome to work with these half hedges. But hey, at least the large ones are working fine, so as I said earlier, try to stick to those if you have already acquired this release. To finish off, let me inform you about this weekend's community events, but as they enabled another combo, Combo Wombo, Double Gold Bullion and Mystery Pick, at the Prevair of course. Both events are live until next Monday, November 15, so make sure to deliver as many treasury notes as you can if you really need that extra gold. As for the Prevair, you can now buy her Mystery Pick boxes, but this type of gambling is not a very good idea at this point in time. Your chances to get what you want or may need are much, much higher if you simply buy legendary modules and then combine them with the cores, script and so on to roll legendary statues for the gear piece you want through the crafting system. I really don't recommend you to spend script on mystery picks, but at the end of the day, the choice is always yours. All right, the news time is now over, but hold on, I have a random bug for you, as per usual. This time, it's the wise Mothman getting bugged in the middle of the sky. This is actually a common bug once you complete the Path of Enlightenment event. However, the Mothman usually descends at some point, better later than ever, as they say, but this time, he never did. He stayed there for eternity, some players even died trying to interact with him mid-air, then the Mothman started shaking or dancing? I mean, trying to descend, but the bugs held him back so strongly that it got devoided of its true potential. You shall not descend. And he never did, <laughs> literally. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. There's a lot more news on the way. I've been working on a Fallout 5 video as well. I think you guys will like it. So stay tuned for more. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't yet. That's it for now. I am Marta Branco and I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.